Welcome to the Brew Crew Review Podcast, the show by fans for fans of your Milwaukee Brew. All right, Brewer fans, welcome to the Brew Crew Review Podcast. Uh, joining you today is yours truly, Craig, along with my cohort, Vince. Vince, how are you doing? Doing great, Craig. How are you? Doing all right. So today we're going to bring to our listeners and our fans, uh, Burr fans out there, our annual tradition of revealing our top 30 future Burrs, uh, which is basically a top 30 Burrs prospect list. I will uh, be happy to say that the Burrs uh, have been ranked pretty unanimously now in the top five overall farm systems in baseball, which is pretty exciting. Um, in fact, Baseball America, which is like the leading source of prospect rankings, has us ranked third farm system in the major leagues. Um, and that's usually, you know, those farm systems that are that strong are usually to teams coming out of rebuilds, which the Brewers are not doing. Um, so what are your thoughts on that ranking, Vince? Yeah, it's it's pretty exciting. I know that there were a couple of years there where the Brewers system had really kind of fallen off of a cliff. And, and you know, we started our show back in 2004, um, kind of under the premise that we wanted to look at that generation's group of young players who were coming through our system at that time and and as you know craig but for for the benefit of some of our audience who may actually be too young to remember which is also hard to believe by the way um back in the early 2000s the brewers were we had drafted prince fielder and ricky weeks um in the first round back-to-back years i believe and then uh, also had a number of good young uh, other young players that were coming through the system kind of at the same time guys like jj hardy and Corey hart and uh, Bill Hall was just a little bit older, but he was still a younger player for the Brewers at that time. Um, and then that kind of lasted through Ryan Braun. And these guys, these guys last, or, uh, debuted starting in like 05, 06. In Braun's case, it was 07. And that's what led the Brewers back to the playoffs in 08, um, in 2011. And, um, you, you've kind of seen sustained success from the franchise for the most part, um, since then. That being said, the Brewers, uh, system had, suffered for a number of years, partially because of that success where the Brewers got later picks. And, and we can talk about this, but we missed on a number of our number one draft picks over those years. And I know that we exchanged a list in our pre-production meeting uh, a week or two ago, Craig, of some of the Brewers first round busts that we've had over the past, you know, 25 years or so. And it's kind of interesting to look back at some of those names. So I'm really glad to see that the Brewers um, are kind of maintaining that uh, core depth within the system um, that I think is necessary for a team's sustained success. And even if we had all the money in the world, uh, it is still incredibly important to have a, a, a minor league system that's full of depth and um, can can provide necessary fill-ins at multiple positions. And you've seen teams that are much wealthier, teams like uh, the Mets or even the Yankees, who are not able to replace holes that they have on their own big league roster because of their weaker system. So it's really exciting to see the Brewers taking the approach that the system itself is very important. And and final thought, really quick, Craig, not to go on a rant here, but um, I think that this uh, it's it's exciting from um, you know the perspective of the draft, and we should also talk a little bit more about the international side of this as well. The Brewers um, just in the past couple months have have. Uh, doubled down and reopened a a bigger and improved uh, academy in the Dominican Republic. And um, I know that the Brewers are actively scouting in a number of other um, international markets. So I think that that's obviously essential for any team uh, in 2023, but or 2024, but very good to see that the Brewers are doing um, their due diligence internationally as well. That's a great point, Vince. Um, And, and they've, they're just keeping up with the times because a lot of other teams are, teams are doing really well. Um, targeting the international market and it's especially fruit for, for, for teams that don't have high draft picks because of their, you know, perennially pretty successful. As you look at the teams like the Braves and the Dodgers, they seem to do really well hitting the international markets, the Yankees even. Um, and, and so it's good to see the Brewers uh, going with that same philosophy um, when target, you know, when developing players. And, and, and I think, and we'll, as we'll see, um, to the top top of this ranking and uh that really international prospects are are, are some of the reasons why um the Bur- the brewers have such a high highly rated farm system as we speak so the other reason i guess i'll point out my the fact that the brewers haven't gone all in and it you know they've made the playoffs five of the last six years and were one game out the year that they didn't so basically they were contending for six straight seasons which is 
quite something for uh, this Milwaukee Brewers franchise that's now 54 years old. Um, and, and in spite of that, they haven't kind of gone all in and sold a bunch of prospects to, to make a huge run in any one season. They really just kind of tinker and toyed and added uh, some more role players at the deadline. And unfortunately, it doesn't gotten us a trophy, uh, a World Series trophy at least. But what it has done, it hasn't gutted the farm system. And I think that's why it remains this strong um, uh, going into this um, at this year. So um, I, so we want to reach out to our longtime minor league analyst and my younger brother, Brandon uh, Miller, along with uh, his son and prodigy, Alex, have actually helped put input into this list, as they always do. Um, and so we've got a list of 30 players here and a top 30 future brewers. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and go well, from 30 down to one. Well, one one uh, question really quick. Isn't Scotty uh, going to kind of, isn't he on the call or on the show here today as well to help out? I think he helped to compile the list at least. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. Yeah, he did. He did. Him and his interns did also help uh, assist on the list, but uh, he's he might chime in any time, but. He's a very busy okay. man, so we'll see. Um, okay. So, again, here we go from 30 to 1. Um, and we'll start off with number 30, second baseman Felix Valario, who's 23. Uh, he was actually acquired from the Mets in a Keon Box, Broxton trade. Um, he's fallen down the rankings a little bit, but he's still hanging in there at number 30. At number 29 is shortstop Juan Baez. He's an 18-year-old. Um and number 28, we've got Coleman Crow, right-handed pitcher. He's a 23. He made it to double-A last year. He was part of the Hauser-Taylor trade this offseason, so he gets added into our farm system. Um, I know you weren't a fan. He's, uh, he's currently injured right now, Craig, isn't he? Um, when are we expecting him back? Do we have any word on that? Good question and a great point. Um, he's not expect. He's pretty much expected to miss almost this entire year. If he pitches at all, it'll be a very few innings late in the minor league season. Uh, so definitely not expecting him to be a contributor to the Brewers this year. But with that being said, he is, does have like a high upside-ish arm. And apparently he was one of the main catalysts for them to move, besides, I guess, saving a bunch of salary, <laughs> moving Hauser and Taylor, who have been integral parts of our playoff runs the last couple of years. So, yeah, Coleman Crow well, does have a cool name but uh, and a nice arm. But besides that, I know that you weren't a big fan of that trade. But he did add the 28th prospect to our system here, according to um, – our Meyer League analyst. So number 27, here's a guy who's actually making some noise in spring training, 24-year-old uh, Wes Clark, first baseman. Um, he's made it up to double A so far. And then 26 on the list, we've got Yadir Aranamo, a 20-year-old second baseman who made it up to single A. 25th on the list, we've got Dylan O'Ray. He's a 19-year-old who also made it to single A and had uh, 31 steals and only 200 40 at bats last year. So he's got tons of speed. Um, 24th on the list, we've got catcher Matthew Wood. Uh, he's 22 and made this tie A. 23rd on the list. We're, uh, we're pretty stacked on catchers, aren't we, Craig? Uh, just to kind of yeah, I mean, reflect on that for a moment here. I mean, with Jefferson Cuero, and I know we're, we're set for, what, another four years at the big league level with William Contreras before he hits free agency. We're, we seem to be really stacked um, with catchers in our system. Do you think that Guys like Wood uh, have a realistic shot at making the big league team anytime in the next couple of years. What do you think that the Brewers might do with a guy like Jefferson Cuero? I, it just seems like he might be too good to keep as a backup, but that's a really good problem to have. What are your what are your thoughts on organizational depth at the catcher position? Well, I know organizations love having as much depth at catcher as possible because they're always needed at all levels. But um, a lot of a lot of catching pro, quote unquote prospects uh, have a higher fail rate, I guess you could call it, than most other prospects, and which already have a huge fail rate for the most part as far as busting out. Um, so, you know... If you're referring to Angel Salome with that comment, Craig, I'm, I'm going to be very upset. It was a... <laughs> it, was, it was one of the bigger busts that I've predicted was going to be. Oh, no, yeah, I, I, I do like Angel <laughs> Salome. Uh, but yeah, he never did make it. No, it, it, um, so, no, Matthew Wood, I think he's got a shot, but obviously... Being 24th on this list uh, and some guys ahead of them, um, you know, and again, there's always trade bait, too. So that's always important to a contending team, which I'm hoping the Brewers will continue doing. So 23rd overall on the top 30 future Brewers list is second baseman Daniel Giarte. He's a 20-year-old. He made up the single A last year. 
Number 22 on the list is one of our 2023 international signees and is a uh, big high upside, and that's shortstop Filippo De Turi. Um, so I've heard a lot of good things about him in the prospect community. Again, um, way way long in the future. He's only 18 years old, but uh, very high upside and obviously a low floor uh, since he's only 18. But, uh, yeah, he, he could be an exciting name that could shoot up this list, no problem. Um 21 on the list is right-handed pitcher Logan Henderson, who I believe was like a, around a second round, second or third round pick a couple of seasons ago. He's slowly made his way up the chain. He's made his way to Double A last year, the 21 year old, and he's got an awesome changeup, but a kind of questionable fastball. Um, but yeah, I, I think he still profiles as a back rotation starter. Uh, number 20 uh, was our one of our 2023 draft picks, and that's Mike. Boy, Boev, he's uh, 21, made it to single A last year. Um, has a nice line drive bat. Number 19, another 2023 draftee, and that's third baseman Eric Bianti. Uh, he was drafted out of high school. Um, number 18 on the list, second baseman Oliver Dunn. Uh, acquired last year from the Phillies, actually, for a couple of our uh, prospects, including the son of uh, Dayton Moore, GM. Uh, former GM um, Robert Moore was traded for him, and and he's already 26 years old. He kind of profiles as a super utility player, um, and he's basically major league re- level, uh, major league ready. I, I wouldn't surprise to see him get some at bats of the Brewers this year. I, apparently, the Brewers were higher on him than any other team, and he had a great season last year in the minor leagues uh, and increases power pr- quite significantly from previous years. So Oliver Dunn, someone to watch as a possible future Brewer, even of th- this year. Um, and Craig, I should uh, point out that Oliver Dunn is having a great spring right now too. I think he's hitting like 600 seriously this spring. If you look at his Cactus League stats, obviously, uh, obviously a very small sample size, and um, you know, spring training only counts for so much. But um, it is nice to see that he's getting off to a really good start this spring down in Maryville. He strikes me as some of those late bloomer, possible diamond in the roughs, and the Brewers targeted him. So um, I think they have high hopes for him. Um, all right, and then 17 on our top future 30 Brewers list is one of uh, Brandon and his son's favorites is uh, Edward Perez. Uh, he was toward the top of this list a couple of years ago. He's now uh, 20 years old. He made his uh, way to single A last year, but he has struggled pretty mightily, um, but there's still hope, obviously, as a 20-year-old. Um, 16th overall, we've got right-handed pitcher Bradley. And, and, yeah, go ahead. and just to – just, yeah, just to jump in a few times here, the um, Hedbert, the the son of former Milwaukee Brewers outfielder Robert Perez, he played mostly in Toronto, but he did actually appear for the Brewers. I think it was 2001, so he would be the um, the son of a former Brewer if he ever would make the big league team. Pretty cool, yeah, definitely pulling for him. Um, right-handed pitcher Bradley Blaylock is at 16 on this list. He was acquired, uh, I think, straight up for Louis Urias from the Red Sox. He's 23. He only made up to, to high A, but his supposedly his secondary stuff is what he's upticked in the last couple couple seasons. The Brewers targeted him uh, via trade. And number 15, uh, this was our biggest international signee of last year uh, from 2023, and that's Yofri Rodriguez, an outfielder, 18 years old. Um, he does have a high, high ceiling, of course. Uh, but again, we don't want to get excited. Cited. I mean, obviously, some guys end up like Jackson Trio at the top of prospect list, and some guy, a lot, a lot more guys, end up like Edward Perez, where they struggle as they climb the ladder. But he's only 18, so I expect to see his name more in the next couple seasons. Number 15 on the list, we've got shortstop Eric Brown Jr., former first round pick. He's made his way to Double A as a 23 year old. Um, again, he's got great defense and he's got pretty good plate discipline, but um, overall, he's in my opinion, he's kind of fallen off as, as, as someone who profiles as an MLB regular, um, but we'll see. Um, and 13th over on, on the list, we've got outfielder Luis Laura, uh, and he's 19. He, he, his arrow is pointing straight up. He's, he made his way to the high A last year. And again, one of these international former international signees that had a high ceiling. So expect to see more from him. Uh, here we go. Number 12, we've got Josh Knott, who is a – Drafted a right-handed pitcher, drafted a high school last year, and I think it was supplemental first or second round um, last year. And uh, he's got awesome curveball, uh, but he's only about six foot, 190 pounds. Um, but the Brewers really love his arm and his spin rate. So 
look for him to, to move through his system. Uh, number 11, we've got third baseman Luke Adams, a 19-year-old slugger at single A. Um, I've heard a lot of good things about him. And that brings us to finally the top 10 of our 30, uh, top 30 future brewers here. And uh, this is a pretty solid list. Brandon and Alex did want to point out that they have included the guys that came over in the Orioles deal in this trade. Um, so that's pretty exciting. Um, as they're both, even though they're both 20, 24 years old, they both qualify as Meyer leaguers, uh, um, as future brewers because they have not p- played for the brewers yet. So, all right. Um, Number 10 on the list, we've got Carlos F. Rodriguez. The Brewers actually have two Carlos Rodriguez in their system. The one's an outfielder who's not on this list. The other one's a right-handed pitcher who has made his way as a 22-year-old all the way to AAA. Again, not overpowering fastball, but he's got like a great mix of pitches. I think he throws like four or five pitches. And with those, he's got a lot of deception. He's racked out a pretty nice K-rate uh, his way up the system. And he seems like an underrated back-to-the-rotation type arm. And I think he could contribute this year even, Carlos Rodriguez. So I uh, hope to see him this year as a brewer. Number nine on the list, uh, someone you mentioned already, Vince, and that's his catcher Jefferson Aguero. Um, he's 22 and made his way to AA last year. Again, um, obviously he's blocked at the ma- major league level as of right now. Um, but... You know, he's someone uh, who would be exciting to see it develop as you know, he'll probably spend most of the year at AAA this year. So, all right, number and eight. Who, is... At least for his first couple of seasons, too, just to get some experience at the big league level, he, he could certainly serve as a backup to Contreras. I think that the catcher position, unlike many other spots, uh, especially a big league team, requires that the starter is going to get a lot of days off and, you know, days of rest. So, um, it's a pretty grueling position, so I, I do think that even a backup catcher uh, like Quero could kind of be eased into that role, um, you know, and, and still play 60-plus games a year. Yeah, and even though we have Eric, Eric Haas and uh, Gary Sanchez on our 25-man roster as catchers, obviously those guys are veterans and a little injury-prone, both of them actually, especially Sanchez. So uh, I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if the Brewer fans saw him up at the big league sometime this year, like you're pointing out. That's great. Um, here's another yeah. guy that we'll see almost for sure at the big league level. Uh, and that's number eight on the list, Tyler Black. Uh, they've got him listed here as a first baseman. It, um, we could play second or third uh, potentially. Uh, and he had a great season at AAA last year. A little bit of power, some decent speed, great uh, strike zone judgment, so to speak. Knows how to get on base. So he's an exciting guy. The Brewers drafted as a second baseman out of college as a couple of seasons ago and has really – uh, had a great season last year uh, in particular. So number seven on the list, another person that's uh, going to contribute this year almost for sure, and I'm very excited to see him, and that's Robert Gasser, 24 years old, who made it to AAA last year, obviously a big part of the Josh Hader trade of a few years ago. And I think just because of that, um, you know, left-handed pitcher, I think he could definitely be a number three or number four starter at the big league level for a long time. And we're excited to see what he can do as a, as a rookie this year. Um, number six on the list, and this is one of our draftees. In fact, I believe he was a six round draft pick last year for the Brewers. And that's out of high school shortstop Cooper Pratt. He's only 19 years old, but he tore up rookie ball. And uh, he was projected to go in the late first round, early second round, and he fell away to the sixth round because of signability concerns. The Brewers gave him an overslot bonus, and he's been compared to Gunnar Henderson on the Orioles, uh, who just had a phenomenal rookie season last year. Obviously, uh, you can always compare anyone to anyone, but I mean, he's basically six foot four and 190 pounds, I think, currently, but he's got a frame to still fill out. And they expect him to have big time power going forward, too. So, um, yeah, so Cooper Pratt, someone who could, you know, really move up this list. But I, I think that we've got him pretty high at number six overall. And that's an exciting player to have in our system, but he's probably a long ways off as a 19 year old. So, and obviously, you can't go wrong with the name, uh, someone with the name Cooper in the Brewers system, as far as I'm concerned. So, um, <laughs> it's like Scotty's dog or uh, Cooper the ballpark puppy. Yeah, the email retriever. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, yep. So, all right, here we go in the top Cooper. five. Finally, we have the top five, and we're going to start it off with our Orioles uh, acquisitions, and that's shortstop Joey, Joey Ortiz, uh, 24, had a great season at AAA last year, has really been a nice hitter in the Orioles system, and it was obviously blocked on the infield there, um, so it made sense for him to come over in our deal, and I think he's probably the heir apparent to shortstop, 
for Willie Thomas whenever he gets moved, whether or not it be some point during the season, um, after the season. Um, most likely our shortstop of the future. And I know that uh, in our pre-production meeting, I kind of compared him a little bit to expect him to have a career very similar to Jer- um, J.J. Hardy, Farmer Brewer, where he's got a little bit of pop. I think he even has a little bit more speed than Hardy, but really nice defensively and a good good, uh, good uh, bat at the plate that could probably hit between 260 and 280 at the MLB level, in my opinion. So that's a real so- solid shortstop to have. And those don't grow on trees. So I think he was a, a big centerpiece of the uh, – Carbon burns trade. And when you're trading the best pitcher in your franchise history, you know, at least want to get some blue chippers back. And I feel that like these are the guys that are it. So number four on the list, they've got even one higher than that. And they've got DL Hall, 24 year old left-handed pitcher. He did get some major league action last year out of the bullpen for the Orioles. Again, electric arms, got amazing stuff. Uh, again, his, just like a lot of guys with amazing stuff in the major league level has a, ha, has an issue with control, uh, controlling his pitches and whatnot, and so therefore profiles a potential high high leverage bullpen arm. But I think the Brewers, and from everything that I've seen, are going to uh, give him a shot. To, he wants to be a starter. They're going to give him a shot to be a starter, start out his career. And uh, again, I won't want to throw out huge cons, but you know, really, um, I, I think this guy's got a high ceiling and could be anywhere up to like a number two starting pitcher or even like a, a closer. So. Um, Definitely a valuable guy to add to your system, which the Brewers have now done. So excited to see him this year, big time. Um, all right, here we go with the top three future Brewers. Um, number three, our number one draft pick of last year, and that's Brock Wilkin, uh, who is a third baseman. He also, the scouts think that eventually in his career, he'll probably get moved over to first, but he is a third right now in the minor leagues, and that's the Brewers definitely have an opening there. He could contribute, I think, late this year but most likely he will we'll see him next year sometime but uh, he, right now in spring training he's up with the big boys and he's 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 making a name for himself already as he's 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 really tearing it up so look forward to seeing Brock. yeah and he did get called up as high as double a last year absolutely yeah and and right out of college as a 21 year old in fact he pretty much was universally thought of as the the biggest par bat in the draft and i think the brewers got him at it was their i think 17th or 18th overall Last year, so it was a, it was a, it, I was pretty excited to get him at where we did. So, all right, number two was our the biggest breakout I would say in the Brewer system last year, and that was their number or their second round draft pick from two years ago, and that is Jacob Mizorowski. They did take him out of community college, which they specialize in over the years. Um, right-handed pitcher with awesome stuff, electric stuff. Again had a hard time controlling it, but last year he really made strides at all and made his way all the way up to double a, he really has a high ceiling as an ACE or number two starter. Again, people have compared him to Tyler glass now. Um, and we'll see what we have in Jacob Mizorowski going forward, but he should spend most of the year at triple a. I don't expect him to do more than anything. Maybe like a September cup of coffee up with the big club this year, but you never know. Starting the year at AAA, if the, it, depending on injury or whatnot, we could see him a little bit earlier than that. But um, I, I think for his own development, it makes sense to keep him at AAA for most of this year. So excited. Future piece of the Brewers rotation, definitely in Jacob Mizorowski, in my opinion. So, all right. And then this brings us to the pretty much universal number one Brewer prospect, and it's Jackson Trio. Uh, outfielder who we just signed to a 10-year deal, which was a major league record-breaking contract. You don't hear the the the, <laughs> the word Milwaukee Brewers and a record-breaking contract very often. So I think we should kind of like glow in the limelight of that for a little bit. But basically, he's a consensus top three prospect in all baseball. Um, you know, people international former international signing, only 19 years old. He will turn 20 this season. He, he will. It's very possible he'll start the year. At, as a Brewer starting center fielder. And I think he's got a very at minimum like 2020 potential with the homers and the steals. Really nice bat, right handed bat, can hit it for a high average. And he's going to be a phenomenal, all great defense. He's a phenomenal all around player. I think he's going to be a future all star, at the, in my opinion. So, what, what are your thoughts on uh, Jackson Trio and his role in the 2024 Milwaukee Brewers? Yeah, it's obviously exciting. I also think that it's, it's kind of a, cool year uh, as we head into 2024. I do think that the Brewers can definitely be contenders this season. I think that uh, the Central Division is relatively weak uh, compared to the other divisions. I don't think um, that the other teams in the division have improved a ton this offseason, and the Brewers are the returning champions of that division from 2023. So 
Um, that being said, we've got a lot of younger players that are in the mix now and, and expected to take on big roles with this team. Um, when you look at our outfield mix, besides Christian Yelich, you've got a bunch of guys who are in their first or second year, um, including Churio. And I, I do think that Churio is going to be given the job. Um, there's no need to worry about service time since he's already locked up for so long. Um, if I'm the Brewers, I'm using this year as both a competitive year, but also a year to get these guys really a lot of very real experience. And I, I would kind of throw everybody into the mix and see what happens. Um, you know, worst case scenario, they struggle and you, you, you know, move on and try something else in 2025 and get these guys that experience that I think will help them down the road. But um, just given where our starting rotation is at, I don't think that it's like a, a, a win at all type of mentality. I, what am I trying to say? I don't, I don't think that it's like last year where we went into it with a certain window on having, you know, the top three starters probably uh, in Brewers team history on the same team at the same time. Um, it's a little different scenario this year with, you know, Woodruff not coming back till, you know, August at best and uh, Corbin Burns obviously gone. So I, I think that you try stuff this year. I think this is the year of experiments and Hey, with the division being weak, I think that it still could work. And I think it'll be a lot of fun uh, just as Brewer fans to kind of see what plays out, but I'm excited about Cheerio. I'm excited about a second year player like Joey Weimer. I'm excited about a full, hopefully healthy full year of Garrett Mitchell. I'm excited about, a full year of self like who also had injuries throughout a lot of last season. People kind of forget that, but um, he was so exciting and electrifying after he was called up, but he was only on the Brewers, you know, from July onwards. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited to see what all these guys can do. I'm excited about Tyler Black and what his bat um, is going to look like at the major league level. I, I think that we're kind of grooming him to be our first baseman of the future, given his lack of starts at, at their base um, this spring. So I'm excited to see him get some quality at bats and, um, we've only got Reese Hoskins under contract for sure for one season. So um, my, my guess is, is that Tyler Black is going to be our future first baseman. Uh, so I'm excited about all these guys. I'm uh, I'm really excited to see Bryce Terang hopefully step it up a little bit with the bat. He's already so good defensively. And then really excited to see what the guys uh, do that we got back from Baltimore for Corbin Burns in that trade with uh, Ortiz and Hall. So I, you know, as much as, as much as I had kind of wanted to go for it with Corbin this year, um, I am also excited about the guys that we got back. So I think that it's, it kind of changes the dynamic going into the season, but I also think that that could be exciting and open up some new possibilities as well. So um, all in all, I'm, I'm really excited to see Churio hopefully on opening day in center field for the Brewers and hopefully for the next nine years and, and eight or nine of those seasons as an all-star. Yeah, it's very exciting stuff. If you're a Brewer, Brewer fan and listener of our show, obviously, and just to give some perspective, I know Scott's interns, the ones that he hasn't fired, uh, have dug up some information from the last couple of years just to see how far our farm system has come. Um, so for the preseason, Brewers ranking on their farm system on uh, 30 teams uh, from 2021 and 22 preseason was around 25 for both those seasons. And coming into the last season, uh, so about a year ago at this time, they were ranked around 15, so they're moving on up. Um, and they did graduate a lot of guys, but now they've moved all the way up to number three. And obviously, Churio Mizorowski had a huge and a great draft class last year. And, uh, and a close course, including the Orioles guys and some of the other guys we even brought in, like we mentioned, you know, from the Urias trade and even from the Hauser and Taylor trade, all these guys add up to, you know, just a stronger farm system overall. So, um, that's, that, you know, that's quite a ways up in the rankings for a team that has been contending. And uh, it's definitely exciting stuff. And kudos to the Brewers scouting staff, both on the international and the, and the obviously um, at the home level too. Um, so stateside level, I mean, they've done great drafting and, and, and developing of these players. Uh, and the, the, the thing I, I, that's so different than back when we used to scout the Meyer leagues uh, basically in person as the Brewer review um, back then, the Brewers are still great at developing hitters, but they still had uh, some struggles developing pitching for the most part. I think Giovanni Garrido was one of the big success stories from back in the uh, the 2000s, so to speak. Uh, but uh, really, they've made huge strides in that, as we can see uh, all of our uh, big three that have gotten us to the playoffs the last five of the last six years have all been, you know, homegrown outside of obviously Peralta was a part of the Adam Lynn trade. But besides that, I mean, Woodruff and Burns both were drafted well, by the, by the Brewers. And, and I, I would actually give them credit for developing Peralta as well as we acquired him at, at the, yeah. at the I think rookie ball level. 
I was going to say, I know that he had not gotten above a ball when we got him from, from Seattle. So he spent barely any time in the Mariners system. And he was certainly a, a wild card who needed a lot of development by the Brewers uh, minor league pitching uh, staff that um, turned into a really quality pitcher and NRA uh, going into here, this season here. Absolutely. And he, he has already come out and saying he wants to throw over 200 innings, which is exciting for someone who's had some up and down injury history and whatnot. So we're going to need him to do that, definitely. Now, the other exciting thing about this list, you know, this list of 30, you know, prospects, future Brewers does not even include these young players all under the age of 26 that, that have uh, made it to the big league levels, graduated to the big league levels in the last year or so. And that's obviously Sal Freelich, uh, Garrett Mitchell, Joey Weimer, and Aaron Ashby. I think all four of those guys are huge parts, obviously, of the Brewers' future as well as the guys on this list. So, I mean, that's a ton of homegrown ca- talent that you're bringing to MLB level. Um, and that's what small market teams need to do. And I think the Brewers are excelling at it. Um, and so kudos to everyone up and down the organization and, and hopefully a lot, a lot of these names, um, you'll see in the Brewers uniform in the very near future. So exciting stuff. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's a really exciting time to be a Brewers fan and, you know, it's frustrating and some of the things going on with the organization can be, I really do think that this year has, uh, a, a lot of reasons for us to be excited and, and a lot of things to look forward to. And I think that it's honestly, um, one of those types of seasons where the Brewers could finish anywhere from first to fourth, basically in this division. And um, I wouldn't be totally shocked. And it's that that's a little different than the last couple seasons where you go into it and you fully expect to win. But um, I do think that this year could be super exciting as Brewers fans. And I, I really do think that we are going to uh, be able to handle the competition within the division this year. I just don't see any, any other teams really um making huge strides from where they were last year. And we are the returning champions um, I, I, and have a great track record of developing guys. And I really do love some of the talent that we're bringing up to the big leagues this year. And Scott's in terms of Sammy, a note that I forgot to mention, and I apologize because I know he's one of our favorite special years events. Bryce Trang is also on one of those, uh, you know, obviously that, that, that just graduated out of our system as well. So you've got Trang, Mitchell, Freelich, Weimer, Ashby, that's five solid major league contributors right there. That's not even on this list. Um, and so, um, yeah, pretty exciting stuff, um, definitely. Um, so, yeah, I, I, really exciting time to be a Brewer fan, I think. Um, obviously, we're flipping the script a little bit and, uh, you know, moving Carbon Burns is a tough pill to swallow, uh, but it is kind of exciting having Woodruff back as a possible uh Contributing late this year, next year, and uh, tons of young guys all, all around. And, uh, yeah, like you said, I, I think the Brewers will be right there competing for the division and for a playoff spot this season, even with this young core of guys. And, uh, you know, it, it, there could be some growing pains to come, but I think the Brewers will definitely be in good shape, uh, even if they have a, a little bit of step back this season by next season or the year after. The Brewers will be firing on all systems again because they're they are able to reload with this awesome farm system that they currently have. Yeah, and we'll just kind of keep that talent flowing, you know. And that's one of the beauty, the beautiful things about taking that mentality that the Brewers have done is that the system is going to keep replenishing itself. I, I noticed that you didn't get quite as angry uh, on draft day last year as you have in other years, Craig. So that's a good sign for me just to kind of look back and think, okay, the Brewers are doing something right to continually reload that system. And by doing so, of course, they're reloading their big league roster each year as that successive wave of guys comes. It seems like just yesterday when that draft was in, uh, with for Garrett Mitchell, but that was already in 2020. So we're talking, you know, four years removed, but that's, that's the type of mentality. I think that we're just going to keep seeing where we've got this talent that we can just keep plugging guys in at the big league level uh, from a very deep uh, impactful farm system. It's, it's very exciting stuff and, and really does, um, not only make a big difference, obviously, but it's so different from the way that the Brewers of like the nineties were run or, you know, some of the teams that we've seen historically didn't have any pitching talent that was developed by the Brewers hardly. And it was, it was so rare for the Brewers to be, you know, producing guys who were pitchers, at least who were, who were all-star level. There was anyone that was decent that we had virtually anyone was acquired, you know, some other way. So it's really exciting to see that the Brewers are able to, to, continue to develop young players um, both as pitchers and across the diamond as well. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, speaking of last year's draft, I don't think we even, well, we won't see the full fruits of last year's draft, but I, I really think the Brewers did a great job. Uh, obviously the two picks of my fair picks with Wilkin and Pratt are, they did focus not only on the corner infield, which they usually ignore, but specifically on power, which is something they also 
don't value quite as much as other teams, I feel. And so it's a little, it was a little bit astray from the normal um Brewers draft of the last like five to ten years, basically. Um, and I and I like that. So they're kind of mixing it up a little bit and, and focusing. I think that they realize, oh, well, we're not, you know, we're not gonna be able to sign huge power bats necessarily. We've been cycling through these ridiculous first and baseman, third baseman, uh, garbage heap type guys for the last 10 years. Maybe we should stop doing that and 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 get a really solid middle or hitter. Uh, that can play the corner infield. I really feel that Brock Wilkin will probably be our first baseman in the future, and Cooper Pratt will probably be a, a third baseman in the future, um, or or vice versa, or whatever. So, I mean, I mean, I really like those two guys out of the last year's draft, but they've they've got a and also some other players like Josh Noth uh, for our p- pitching ranks as well. Um, yeah, it should be a very exciting time. Like I said, um, yeah, and don't forget too that going and we'll obviously do a. a show focused on the 2024 draft but uh, don't forget that because the brewers did trade corbin burns that we do get a supplemental pick um between the first and the second rounds correct plus our first round pick so we do we do have a number of reasonably high selections uh in the june draft or july draft i should say uh here in 2024 as well yeah that's a great point vince that's that, that player has a lot of value that had a supplemental first round pick that the brewers did get and again our, our Brewer fans and listeners are probably aware that obviously uh baseball draft picks cannot be traded except for the competitive balance one so it's rare to make uh draft pick trades but that's about as good of a pick you can get via trade that the Brewers did get in the Corbin Burns deal so again initially was shocking and the return overall seemed a little bit light for Burns but granted the fact that he's on his last year of his deal um, and and you got I, I would say two for sure MLB contributors with some nice upside and then this pick I think it's it's pretty much fair value all, all the way around and probably will help both teams in the long run obviously uh, the Orioles this year as they just got themselves one heck of an ace so um, but anyway yeah so exciting time spring training is uh, halfway through I know that uh, Sc- Scott will be scouting the Brewers actually in Las Vegas this weekend so hopefully yeah he'll get to report. On that, he's yeah, glad he's, our, uh, I, yeah, glad he's using our press passes. I yeah, glad he's using our press passes because I haven't had a chance to get down there this season. Yeah, absolutely. We should probably fax more of the press passes and use it at Las Vegas ballpark, home of the AAA A's affiliate, the Aviators. Uh, they'll, they'll be playing two games there: the the, the A's uh, and the Brewers um, this weekend. So I think of the Friday and Saturday games coming up so hopefully we'll have some more information and we'll, we'll, if, if anyone any prospect or young player catches scott's eye here at the games coming up so that'll be exciting to find out and yeah, yeah. Well, on our next episode we'll probably bring you our season predictions for the 2023 season as this year they do the season actually starts uh, with a two-game series between the Dodgers and padres and seoul korea uh, on the 20th and 21st of March, which is less than two weeks away. So exciting stuff. Yeah, that's really exciting stuff. I just want to add a note for our listeners here. Feel free to send us your season predictions. Uh, we'll certainly take a look at those, and uh, we'll read a couple on the air perhaps if we've got time. Uh, you can send those to Scotty's uh, monitoring and email account here, uh, Bruker Review Podcasts with an S at gmail.com, and Scott will take a look at that. Otherwise, just shoot it to us on Twitter. Bruker Review 1 is our uh, Twitter uh, handle. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks for your time today, Vince. And yeah, hopefully we can meet up at spring training one of these seasons. Um, as it- I know, I know that Tom Carter's going down there this year too, Craig. Our anonymous source, Tom, will be there, and oh, uh, maybe him see. and Scott will be meeting up. Yeah. So we'll have to do. Uh, maybe we can do some sort of interview with with Tom Carter. We'll make it off the record, of course, um, since he wants it to be, you know, anonymous. But that's uh, that'll be an option for our next podcast as well. Awesome. All right, well, stay classy, Brewer fans, and go Brewers. <laughs> Thanks, Craig. Thanks, Brandon. Thanks, Scotty. Go Brewers. Do, do, do.